What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at official SteamOS 3.8, running on the all new ROG Xbox Ally X. This is something I've been wanting to test since the launch of the Xbox Ally X, but unfortunately when it comes to official SteamOS, it just wouldn't boot up on the Z2 Extreme APU. We also had issues with other APUs in the Strix Point and Strix Halo line, but now with the new mainline 3.8 that should be releasing soon, we can boot this up. And I'll tell you what, performance and battery life here is pretty great. Now there's really one thing that I can't get working here, even with a third party plugin, and that's gonna be RGB control. But I don't think that's a huge priority. As long as we can get this up and running and you know, we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, screen, variable refresh rate, all of that stuff's working, then I'm not too worried about it. And every once in a while, the RGB will cut out here. So I just do a reboot and it comes back on but it's not controllable at the time I'm making this video with SteamOS 3.8. Before we get into testing, there are a few things that I wanted to go over. And when installing official SteamOS on a device like this, the ROG Xbox Ally X, it's not gonna be fully supported by Valve. Even though we can install it, screen works, we've actually got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth working here. If we head into our performance menu, moving down, you'll notice that we don't have any TDP control. This is going to be really important. So third-party plugins really come in handy here. Using Decky Loader, I've installed Simple Decky TDP. And with this, we can actually go down to 4 watts all the way up to 40 with the ROG Xbox Ally X. Uh, there are a few other things that we can do here. We can prefer the GPU or CPU. And the adjustment is really great with this application. And another thing I personally like doing with these handhelds is just full customization. So right now, you'll see, I mean, we've got that basic Steam Deck look. But if I head into my CSS loader, I've set up a profile. Now we've got a totally different look here, and I just love the way it's set up. Uh, other than that, I mean, if we want our on-screen overlay all the way down, we can get it here. Uh, we can disable the frame limiter. I'm up to 120 hertz connected to my game capture right now. Half rate shading. You can set up the scaling mode and scaling filter if that's something you want to do. And just to show you that we are on official Steam OS, settings, we'll go to system. And right down here, we've got Steam OS Hollow. It's 3.8. This is the main branch that I'm using here. And you can see that we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Z2 Max, up to 5 gigahertz, 8 cores, 16 threads. We have a total of 24 gigs of RAM with this system. I've dedicated 10 to VRAM. So we've got 13.24 here for system memory and 10 for the built-in iGPU, which happens to be that 16CU Radeon 890M. And so far, I mean, it's a real snappy experience. But uh, one thing that I always get asked when I do a video like this is just, you know, how does it stack up against the Steam Deck at the same kind of wattage? 77. Now, some of you might be noticing uh, up in our performance overlay on the ROG Xbox Ally X, it only shows one section with our wattage right there on the GPU. But this is split up between the CPU and GPU. From Simple Decky TDP, we're at 15, and I made sure of it doing some battery testing without it plugged into the wall. I just wanted to be safe and make sure we're right there at 15 watts. And yeah, I mean, with both of these sitting like that, at 720p, Steam Deck preset with Cyberpunk 2077 at a 15 watt TDP, on the Steam Deck OLED, we averaged 44 FPS. And I'll tell you, if I ran this again, there's a chance we could do up to around 47 with the Steam Deck OLED. I've seen that with this exact version of Cyberpunk 2077. But out of two runs, this was my highest one. And over on the ROG Xbox Ally X, we averaged 58 FPS. And we can get a lot more out of it with the ROG Xbox Ally X because we can go up to a 35 watt TDP sustained with this APU. But most of the time when I'm running this with SteamOS installed, I'm anywhere from 17 watts up to 25, depending on what game I'm playing there. But I still wanted to show this off just to kind of show you the gains at that same TDP between the Steam Deck OLED and this device with the Z2 AI Extreme. I'm gonna start out pretty heavy here with SteamOS on the ROG Xbox Ally X. We've got Borderlands 4, and this is really known for not working very well on iGPUs, and especially on iGPUs and Linux. This game definitely needs more optimizations for these lower end systems, but right now we're at 900p low, FSR frame gen on, 35 watt TDP, 
And during battle, it's still going to dip under that 60 mark. I mean, that's just how it is right now. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do until we get some more optimizations for the game itself. Taking a look at Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080 high 25 watt TDP. I showed you this thing at 15 watts 720p with that Steam Deck preset, just kind of facing it off against the Steam Deck OLED. We're getting an average of around 52 FPS with it set up like this, and if you drop it down to 900p medium settings, even at 20 watts, we can get over 60, around 64 FPS on average. But I wanted to show it off at 1080 high, and we're not that far off. Spider-Man 2, 1080 medium with FSR frame gen on. If you want to get over 60 with this thing, uh, you'll definitely need some frame gen on an iGPU. This is one of those games that is hit or miss, especially in Linux. Sometimes I'll boot it up even on the original Ally with no frame gen and see some good performance. The next time I go into it after a reboot, the whole thing just kind of falls on its face. So frame gen is going to be your best friend with this one. Elden Ring is another one that I wanted to show off, especially on this uh, Ryzen AI Z2 Extreme. To hit 60 FPS with this game in Linux on an iGPU, you need a pretty powerful iGPU. Something that comes in the Ryzen AI Max systems. Because I want to show you here, we're using the same wattage, we're at 900p, but I'm going to swap it up to 1080. 21 watt TDP, medium settings. And we really didn't lose any from running this at 900p up to 1080. And now what I want to do is take it up to a 30 watt TDP instead of 21. So we're at 1080p medium 30 watt TDP. And we're just not going to be able to lock down at 60 with this. Even with this thing running at a 40 watt TDP, we're only seeing an average of around 58. And I really do think it comes down to the game itself because we see the same kind of performance here, even on something like the Z1 Extreme at the same wattage. And finally, Doom the Dark Ages at 900p medium with FSR set to balanced. No frame generation, no dynamic resolution scale. We're getting an average of around 63 FPS at a 30 watt TDP. Would be nice to take it up to 1080. And in order to do that, we'll need to add some frame gen, but we can get way up in there with the frame rate using frame gen at 1080 on this thing. The next thing I wanted to take a look at was just total battery draw on this system versus the Steam Deck. Here's the Steam Deck OLED. We're running Silk Song at 720p. And system wide, I've got the refresh rate set to 60 hertz. It's drawn around 8 watts in total from the battery. And if we take a look at the same thing running on the ROG Xbox Ally in SteamOS 3.8. We're actually drawing a little less in total from the battery. And plus, we've got a bigger battery here. And one thing I can't turn off completely is RGB, so that's still on here. I thought it was pretty impressive because right now there's really no optimization specifically for the ROG Xbox Ally X and Steam OS, but we're still seeing some great battery life. Just some initial testing here. Remember, we've got an 80 watt hour battery, and with all of my testing, screen brightness was set to 50%. The refresh rate was set to 60 hertz system wide. Indie 2D gaming, 8 watts total draw on average from that battery, so around 10 hours of runtime out of this thing. AAA gaming at a 17 watt TDP, we're seeing a little under 26 watts in total draw from the battery. It's about 3 hours of runtime. And at a 25 watt TDP, that jumps up to around 31 watts in total draw from that battery, so around 2 hours and 30 minutes. This is definitely on par with what we've seen in Windows testing so far. In, in the future, this could get a bit better if there's optimization specifically for this handheld in SteamOS. But even right now, it's not bad at all. So yeah, official SteamOS on the new ROG Xbox Ally X does run really well. But I'll tell you, even Windows pre-installed on this with that big screen experience is coming along really nicely. So in the end, it's up to you. You could always set up a dual boot system, but just know, yeah, you can run official SteamOS on this device. I will have a couple more videos coming with other handhelds. Uh, there's some that I haven't been able to test official SteamOS on just yet due to, you know, not booting on certain chipsets. So if there's any devices or any games you want to see tested in the future, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.